Algebra lesson 5-4. We've done quite a bit of work now dealing with equations from having the information given to us and using y equals mx plus b to then being only given the slope and a coordinate, substituting it in and finding the y equals the y-intercept to all the way just knowing two points. That's all we know. But from those two points we can figure out the slope and if we know the slope in one of the points we can figure out the y-intercept and therefore we can write our own equation. <clears throat> Today we use a little bit more flexibility because we're going to talk about what's called a best fitting line or a line of best fit. A line that is as close to the scattered points as possible. Now this is not going to mean that everybody in the room has the exact same lines. As many points on the line as possible, be sure your line has at least two points on it. Because without two points, we can't find the slope, what we worked on before. We need those two coordinates to be able to find the slope. Remember what scatter plots are? Scatter plots go like this. They're scatter points. They're not perfectly straight lines, but from those scatter points, you could try to make a line that appears to go down the middle of them. This probably would not be the best line. This would probably not be the best line because it's not very fair to all the points. You want to pick a, a point, a line that's as fair as possible to everything. Maybe right there. It all, it all depends on what you think. You think that's best? Go for it. You think that's best? Go for it. Whatever you want. If you thought that was it, you might use that coordinate and that coordinate. In which case, if you know two coordinates, you can find the slope. And if you can find the slope in one of the coordinates, you can write your equation for this line of best fit. Now somebody else might have one that's just a little bit different, which means their slope will be a little bit different, which means their y-intercept will be a little bit different, and their equation will be just a little bit different. There's a little flexibility to it. This particular situation has to do with tadpoles. Now these are the ages of the tadpoles in days, so a five-day-old, two-day-old, nine-day-old, something like that. This is the length of the tail in millimeters, right? So millimeters, very small. The length of the tail for the five-day-old tadpole is 14 millimeters. The two-day-old was longer because remember the tadpole, as it gets older, the tail is actually shrinking as it becomes a frog. So in terms of a graph, you would look at this. It might be a good idea to graph these coordinates. <clears throat> so I have 5, 14. Here is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 millimeters. 12, 14, 16, 18 millimeters. Across the bottom, I've got days. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 days. 12, 14, 16, 18 days. These are all coordinates, so 5, 14, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 5, 14, 2, 15, 2, 15, 9, 3, 9, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 1, 12, 1, 10, 3, 10, 3, 3, 12, 3, 12, and 6, 9, 2, 4, 6, 9. So those are all the coordinate sounds. You look at it as the... As the tadpole tends to get older in days, the tail is getting smaller and smaller as it becomes a frog. Now, why isn't it a perfectly straight line? It's not a perfectly straight line because not all frogs are going to grow or shrink their tail at the exact same amount. Not all humans do. All right? But we can take the data that's here and we can try to make ourselves a line of best fit. <clears throat> now, we can look at this and we could say, well, I think the best line, the line of best fit is right there. I don't know, that doesn't seem very fair to all the other coordinates that are up here. Somebody else might say, nah, I think it's here, I think it's between these two is my line of best fit. And again, that might be, but it doesn't seem very fair to these others. So we really want to try to manipulate this line in such a way that it, it it's, appears to be fair to as many points as we can. Now that one has actually three dots on the line. and this one's pretty close to it. These two aren't far. This one's not far. That one's a little farther away. So I could have an argument that maybe it's not very fair to that. But it's not real far away. It kind of averages out with some of these others. That might be a pretty good line of best fit. I don't know. It's up to you. Maybe you think that one's better. Maybe you think here and there is better. I, you know, that has three points on the line. It's up to you. All right? 
So maybe this is the best one, maybe it's not, it's your choice. But from here, we've got all the information we need. Because we just have to choose two coordinates. We might choose this one right here at the coordinate 212, or uh, 215, I'm sorry. How did I know? Because it's on the coordinates right here as well. I need one of those, I need one more. So I could use 12-1 if I wanted to, or I could use this one here at 8, or is that 7, 7, 8, whichever. It doesn't matter. So I have two coordinates. From those two coordinates, I should be able to find the slope. So 215 and 7 eighths, or 7 8, not 7 eighths. <clears throat> x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. I know I'm going to go 8 minus 15 over 7 minus 2. I'm going to get 8 minus 15 is equal to 7. Negative 7 over 5. That's my slope. Okay. I now have a slope, and I choose one of the coordinates. It does not matter which coordinate, so I'll just use the 2, 5, 2 comma 15. I'll say 15 is equal to my given slope, negative 7 fifths, times the x of 2, plus the b value I don't know. But I'm going to find it out. This I can write as a fraction by putting it over 1. I now have 15 is equal to negative 14 fifths plus b. Now if you want, you can convert this improper fraction into a mixed number, whatever you'd like to do. You could say this is 15 is equal to, that's about the same as negative 2 and 4 fifths plus b. So you could add 2 and 4 fifths here, as long as you add 2 and 4 fifths over there. Those cancel out, and you get a B value of 17 and 4 fifths. Now let's look at our graph. If this graph kept going from where it currently stands, does that look like it's crossing at almost 18, but not quite 18? 17 and 4 fifths is almost 18, not quite 18. So that seems pretty legitimate. So we would now say our final equation, y equals the slope of negative 7 fifths x plus 17 and 4 fifths. All based on a real life situation. Maybe we're a scientist and we've been collecting data and we would like an equation. Now we can use this equation. We could say, okay, how old is the tadpole? The tadpole is 10 days old. All right, we plug in the 10. Plug in 10 right here, you're going to get negative 7 fifths times 10 is going to give you negative 14. You add negative 14 plus 17 and 4 fifths, and you're going to get 3 and 4 fifths. 3 and 4 fifths for a 10 day old. Here's the 10 right there. 3 and 4 fifths looks pretty close to the, what we have. Seems to fit our equation. So the graph represents a way of seeing that in real terms. All right? <clears throat> Correlation. Correlation is just a... a involving relationships or a connection of two things. We can apply them to x and y. It seemed as if there was a correlation between the age and the tail length. As the age of the tadpole got to be more, as the age got older, the tadpole's tail went and got smaller. There's other correlations. The more gas that you use, the more it's going to be expensive. The more you drive, the more gas you use, the more expensive. The more I eat, the more I weigh. Right? Those are all going to have correlations. <clears throat> this particular scatter plot seems to have a positive correlation, a positive relationship. As we look at it, the points are going up from left to right. It's going upward. The slope is going to be positive. This one has a negative correlation. The dots appear to be going down. So as I run, as I go jogging for more hours, my energy level will go down. As I, as I drive... <clears throat> the more gas I buy, the less money is in my bank account. All right? The more gas I buy, the more expensive it is. The, the price goes up. There's a number of ways you could look at those depending on your situation. And this one has no correlation. The dots are all scattered. This has to do with how much I weigh and what, what year I, or what month I was born. There's no correlation between the month you're born and how much you weigh. So there's a lot of different graphs 
you want to look at the data and say, what's the relationship? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is there no correlation, no connection? It all depends on your situation.